What's up guys, this is Kyle24 and I am back at your screens with another useful tech video and today I'm going to be showing you how to use this particular camera, the Canon EOS R as a streaming camera. Now I've done videos before where I've talked about using cameras such as the Canon M50, the Canon M200, even the ZV-E10, the Sony ZV-E10 as streaming cameras and you know step-by-step -step instructions on how to do those and those are all I would say the more budget options for mirrorless cameras to use as streaming cameras. They're the most basic cameras that you can use, especially cameras like the M200, which is probably the cheapest, most basic mirrorless camera you can get for streaming, um, alongside other cameras such as the Canon M50 or um, the M50 Mark II, which is probably the most recommended camera, in my opinion, as a streaming camera. Anyway, all of those cameras are nice and cheap and they are good to use for streaming. However, what about those of you who have access to cameras like this, the Canon EOS R? I've also got a Canon EOS R6, which I'm using, and I might do another video showing you how to use that as a streaming camera. But what about what about you guys? What about the guys who do have the more higher-end gear or the slightly more upper end cameras, upper end mirrorless cameras. What about you? Can you use these cameras as streaming cameras? Absolutely. The Canon EOS R is one of my absolute favorite cameras and I use it all the time for streaming. When I'm not out and about or if I'm not taking it on a professional pay job, um, then 90% of the time it is mounted above my desk as a streaming camera because I not only use it for well, at the moment I'm not really streaming, but I not only use it for streaming, I also use it for all of my webcam needs. I use it as a webcam for all of my Zoom calls, my uh, work meetings, um, any sort of meeting I have, this is the camera that I use because, well, let's just face it, I have access to it and it's fantastic. So I'm gonna go through all the step-by-steps very briefly with you on how to get this camera here working as a streaming camera and there are a couple of things that you guys are going to need. Now number one of course you are going to need the camera itself and I'm going to go through all of the settings within the camera after I've gone through all the hardware bits that you're going to need so I'm just going to put that aside. Number two you are going to need one of these. This is a dummy battery. This is a dummy battery an LPE6N uh, or an, a DRE6 for LPE6 and LPE6N compatible camera. So this will work with any camera that takes an LPE6 battery such as the Canon EOS R, the R6, Heck, I've got a 5D Mark II up there. I, I think the R5 takes the same kind of battery. I'm not sure. But yes, this is the LPE6 dummy battery, which is a DRE6 DC coupler battery. I'm going to put the link down in the description below so you guys can grab exactly the right one. Um, I've got a USB version and a plug-in version. Depends on which one you want. I think the plug-in version is probably a bit better. It does provide a little bit more power, but this works just as fine. I have a USB version as well. So this plugs into like another end, which has a USB port on the other end. So that's that. You're going to need that. Next, you are of course gonna need a capture card of some sort. So this is a cheap 10 pound, 20 pound, $10, $20, whichever currency you're gonna buy it in, capture card. Now I've shown these in my videos before, these are fantastic. They do output at a maximum of 1080, 30. So there is a little bit of a limit, but the input that you can get on these can go up to 4K 60. I think this one goes up to 4K 60, but you can get others that have 1080, 60 input. My camera settings are usually set to 1080, 60 as an input. Um, however, the output coming out as a 1080 30 is not a loss at all. Even in your streams, it's still gonna look great. If you are worried about the stream quality, then you can obviously still opt for the more expensive version of this, which is the Canon 4K, which is what I use 99% of the time. If I'm using a dual camera setup, then I will have one with the Camlink 4K and then the other one being one of these cheap Camlink knockoff USB capture cards. And the final thing you are gonna need is obviously one of these, which is a HDMI to HDMI mini cable. So the HDMI mini side plugs into your camera and then the HDMI side plugs into your capture card like, uh, so I can get that in, like so. That's the hardware bits you're gonna need. I'm gonna list every single thing that you need down in the description box below so you guys can click on it and grab them yourselves if you don't have them. They are gonna be Amazon affiliate links, so it does help the channel out a little bit when you do click and purchase those items through my link. Now I am gonna run through all the settings you need in the camera itself. But first, we're gonna run through the mode that you need to be in. So the mode that I would usually put it into is put it into video mode and manual exposure. So if you've got custom mode set into this where you're using things like C-Log, record your videos with or anything like that then in manual mode make sure all of that is turned off and just have it in plain video mode so video manual mode that is the setting that is the mode that you want to be in I have said mode like 20 times already then following that what you want to have is have it set to FHD or 1080 59.94 and then make sure that your shutter speed in that case is 1 over 125 because you want your shutter speed to always be double your frame rate 
then you want to have your ISO set. Well, the ISO is actually going to be set based on your room lighting. So I'm not going to really recommend a particular ISO for you guys. It depends on what your room lighting is like, depends on what your setup is like. So do make sure you adjust the ISO according to that. And your aperture is also going to depend on that and the lens, as well as the depth of field that you want. If you want a really shallow depth of field, you're going to have your aperture set all the way down to low. Your autofocus can remain on with this camera, so that shouldn't be a problem. Now, if you do worry about kind of focus hunting and stuff like that, then you can set it to manual focus. I use this camera with a Sigma 24 millimeter, which has great autofocus and it kind of keeps focus on my face for 99.99% of the time. So I don't really worry about that. I keep my depth of field as shallow as possible so that I get that nice, crispy, blurry background look in my streams and in my camera feed. So those are the kind of on-screen settings that you want to have. Now we're going to delve a little bit deeper into the menu settings. So when you go into the menu, you're going to come across your um, shoot menu first. So you want to go to number four, and then right at the bottom, you've got HDMI display. Now you've got two options there, one that shows up as a camera plus a screen, the other one that shows up as a screen. Now what I do is I keep it on the camera plus the screen because what that essentially does is that gives you your clean HDMI. It doesn't necessarily say it directly here, but what it's saying is that playback or menus are displayed only on screens of devices connected via HDMI, which basically means that when you have this connected via HDMI into and out, so, through your capture card coming up into your OBS or whatever it is, then the menus, the displays are only gonna show up on the camera itself. It's not gonna show up on the feed. So you're essentially getting clean HDMI. So you want to make sure you have it set to that option and not the option with just the screen because then what happens is that you've got everything show up on the screen and that's not what you want. You wanna have that clean feed going into your output device. So make sure it's set to that. And I think that's the only thing that I would need to say that that's it that's literally all you have to do now the next thing is obviously hooking it all up to your computer and then running it through OBS so I'm gonna kind of shift that way that way over there where can you see where my PC is I'm gonna shift to the PC I'm just gonna show you what you need to do in OBS to get the camera feed into running so I'm gonna get this set up and then I'm gonna show you exactly what you're gonna need to do and then I'm gonna show you the quality of this camera through OBS and what it looks like so give me three two one Okay, so we've shifted over here to my PC. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly what to do inside of OBS if you want to use this as a streaming camera. So now, if we're gonna open up OBS here, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to sources at the bottom here. Now, if you click the plus button on sources, what's gonna come up is you're gonna get a whole bunch of options. And from those options, you wanna click video capture device. So this is given that everything is hooked up nice and ready for you to use your camera as a streaming camera. Now if you look here, what I've got is I've got the camera obviously hooked up to the dummy battery and then the HDMI cable is in and linked to my Camlink 4K, which is plugged into my computer. Now obviously I'm using this on a Mac, but the process is exactly the same as if you're gonna use it on a PC, because I've used it on a PC before. And you know, once you've got OBS running, it's pretty much exactly the same. So we're gonna go and we're gonna Go down there, go to sources, click that plus button, you're gonna get those options and you click video capture device. So you can name that whatever you want. In this case, I'm gonna name it EOS R because that's what it is. So you name it EOS R and then you're gonna get properties for EOS R come up. So here you can select your device that you want to choose. So I've got a couple of devices here. Now in my case, I'm using the Camlink 4K for this. Now in your case, if you're using one of those cheaper Camlink alternatives, then you're gonna get it as a USB capture card. That's basically what's gonna come up. So it's not really very different. And if you're unsure about which one it is, you can just cycle through them and you'll be able to find the one that brings up the feed. So if I click Camlink 4K now, then you can see there my feed is coming up. Now it's really bright. Now obviously the lighting here is very different because um, it's a lot brighter because I've got all of these extra lights in for the sake of the camera that I'm recording with here. Now I'm gonna switch all of these lights off in a second and then I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like when I'm using just my Elgato lights, which I use and turn on when I'm streaming or in a, in a, in a call or something like that. Now before we get to that, I'm gonna just tweak a few more settings so here you want to uncheck use preset and click 1920 by 1080 because that is the output that we have set the camera to and here when you go to frame rate you want to click simple fps value and 59.94 because that is exactly the frame rate and resolution that we have set our camera to and you want obs to match that so what we're going to do is we are going to click ok now and then we're going to right click here transform and fit to screens. Now the reason I did that is because I'm using a 1080p canvas on my OBS and I'm 
using this for demonstration purposes only at the moment. Now, if I was to use it as kind of a, a stream cam um, within OBS, I would size it down to something like that, something smaller, that would be in the corner of my uh, stream and you'd have my gameplay and everything else kind of covering the rest of the screen. So what we are going to do, I'm going to transform that back fit to screen and then now I'm just going to turn all of the other lights off and then we're going to switch just to the feed here. So I'm back, I've turned all the lights off and this is exactly what you're going to see when you have the Canon EOS R hooked up. I'm probably just going to tweak the lighting a little bit more so that it's a little bit brighter here. Um, I think I've got my, all my settings are perfectly fine. I do look a little washed out in my opinion. So I'm just gonna bring the lighting back down to 30. So 30%, that looks better. I mean, if I did turn the light on, I, I think things probably look a little bit better there as well. There is a lot you can tweak obviously um, within OBS to make your feed look better. But look how crisp it is. I'm using the camera, you've got that nice blur in the background because I'm using the Sigma. 24 millimeter f1.4 lens. It's actually set to f1.8 now. So if I turn that down, then you can see it's, it's a lot brighter. I don't like it being that bright. So I do turn it up to f1.8. It just looks nice to me, more natural to me. So this is how it would show to anybody I'm in a call with or to my stream or anything like that. And the quality is fantastic. So that's, I'm really gonna end it there guys because there's nothing else I can show you. That is how you use the Canon EOS R as a webcam, as a streaming camera. And I think it's a fantastic choice. If you've got it at hand, then why not utilize it? If you want your streams to look and have that maximum quality, then definitely use the highest quality gear that you have. I know a lot of streamers who do that. People like Harisella, who's a massive inspiration of mine, uses cameras like the EOS R, the RP, um, Sony A7S, uh, the Sony A7 four cameras you know those kind of cameras he uses all of these kind of high-end cameras for his stream and his streams look amazing obviously you need to get the lighting right you need to get the conditions right you can tweak so many things in obvious to make your video look nicer so make sure you guys go and do that i'm going to leave it at that guys hope this was useful to you hope you guys got some value of this video if you did then make sure you hit that like button if you do enjoy my content in general then make sure you hit that subscribe button 97 percent of you are not subscribed so make sure you do or not or not and if you want to know when my new videos come out, then hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, this is Kai24, signing out. Now I gotta go and change all of this back so that I, I, what am I doing? What am I doing? I am recording here, so I just need to click that stop recording button.